Good morning, everyone. Interim President uh, Woodruff, members of the trustee, the Board of Trustees, thank you for having me today. It is a pleasure to be here to share my work in the field of educational research and to highlight the design process behind the Apple Developer Academy with Michigan State University in Detroit. But before I tell you all about it, allow me to start by showing you a little bit of the Academy experience. This past summer, we graduated our very first cohort of 100 students who completed our first pilot program. And what better way to introduce our initiative than by sharing with you their graduation video produced by our own university communications team. we went from a bare building with no staff and no students over a year ago to what you just watched is what my work is about. I merge educational research with contextual educational data to design evidence-based learning experiences that inspire students to pursue the next step in their life journey while aligning with university-wide strategic goals. This project did just that. It brought Apple together with MSU. Apple had worked on setting up academies worldwide for the past 10 years, and MSU as an intellectual partner to explore educational innovation, along with the support of the Gilbert Family Foundation to situate the experience in the heart of the city of Detroit. The Apple Developer Academy in Detroit is the first and only one in North America. And I often get asked the questions, well, why did Apple pick MSU? The answer is simple, we were willing to execute. We were willing to make small bets, all the while exploring big, bold ideas together. Our very first small bet together with Apple on campus was the iOS Design Lab. It's still running today with colleagues from the College of Arts and Letters and College of Business, which we launched together in 20, 2018. We quickly attracted students from all over campus, and I'm talking computer science, kinesiology, journalism, even urban planning. Students wanted to learn how to develop apps and work around technology using Apple's ecosystem through a collaborative design thinking process. That small but successful bet led Apple and MSU to think bigger and build the academy in Detroit around the same principles. Both at the Academy in Detroit and at the iOS Design Lab on campus, we teach students basics of coding, design, business, and management with Apple tools. In Detroit, though, we teach learners that may be fresh out of high school or have decades of work experience under their belt. Some have tech experience, and others may have never had opened a MacBook before this year. We cherish that diversity because we know from forecasting trends in technology that now, more than ever, we need diverse teams from a variety of backgrounds to design technologies that will tackle our biggest societal challenges. But unfortunately, we also know the, from contextual data that that access to technology education is highly disproportionate in access, in quantity, and in quality. I mentioned that the Apple Academy in Detroit is the first one in the United States. We are also the first academy worldwide under Apple's newly launched Racial Equity and Justice Initiative, Reggie, which is an effort to address systemic racism and expand opportunities for communities of colors across the country, but with a particular focus on education and a particular focus on Detroit. And we know from data like the Opportunity, Opportunity Atlas from the US Census on the screen, that where and for whom opportunities have been missing can be directly correlated to graduation rates and median income at adulthood. You can spot here easily on the map Grand Rapids, Flint, and Detroit 
as areas of high opportunity need. Opportunity need. So our work in Detroit specifically aims at addressing professional mobility and economic growth for Detroiters who have often been systematically impacted by those disparities by preparing them for industries where technology is actually quickly becoming a central part of job requirements. Now, how did we go from this collection of disconnected maps and data points to the video you saw at the beginning of my presentation enters the field of learning experience design? It's a branch of educational research that brings research to reality through design practices. On the one hand, you have learning. So I take into account decades of empirical research on how the brain learns, how stress or physiological safety impacts learning, how emotions or our sense of belonging can support or uh, derail personal growth. And on the other hand, I take research on experience design. That's how designers create beautiful experiences that appear seamless to the naked eye. Well-designed experiences are all around us. A great movie, a museum visit, Disney World, Instagram, Ikea is one of my favorite examples. Experiences where you get so immersed that you forget about everything else for that little moment in time. And I think of learning the same way, where the design of the experience should allow you to focus on what you're here for, to think, to reflect, to grow, to build relationships, and to make an impact in your life and that of others. What makes learning experience design unique, though, is that it is strongly contextual and systemic. No two experiences will look alike. One on campus will not look the same in Detroit because we take into a, uh, account how the environment around the learning experience itself affects learning. The school system, the home, the community, the media we're exposed to on a daily basis. All those things are part of the social, physical, and psychological context that can affect student achievement. Designing a learning experience in this vein implies mapping out what that system looks like, mapping out how research intersects with local and contextual data, and embedding multiple stakeholder voices in the process, especially student voices and early on in the, pro in the project. A well-designed learning experience speaks for itself and turns research into reality. In only our second year in operation, we received at the Academy over 1,200 applications. We ran almost 400 selection interviews and accepted 200 detourters to our second year in the Academy with 40% women and an age range between 18 and 70 years old. Allow me to conclude by illustrating this reality through the stories of our own students in this year's cohort. This is the story of Doretha and Miss Gerald. They were not sure that they fit at the academy, only to realize that they actually have so much knowledge, experience, and wisdom to share with others. They are a dynamic duo, you would not know, but born out of the academy, and they teach others confidence and grit on a daily basis. It's the story of Duke and the black shirt in the back, whom I met in a high school recruitment event last year. He had tried dual enrollment in high school, but did not feel in control of his education and decided college was not for him. And now, he does not want to leave. It's also the story of Andre, who was accepted last year and backed out last minute because he thought he was too old. It's only when he heard of our 64-year-old graduating student last year in the program that he said, well, if he can do it, so can I. <laughs> and Andre is our most supportive and engaged student in the academy, and we just celebrated his 70th birthday with him this year. But it's also the story of my amazing team that runs the show on a daily basis. Take Annie, my academy manager. She's a Spartan alum who moved all the way from her hometown of Grand Rapids over a year ago to take a new job in an empty space in Detroit with no students, no colleagues, because she believed in the mission of the work we had set to do. Finally, it's a story that's gaining traction, but where need still exists. This year, we received funding from the state of Michigan to support our students, but even though the academy is a free program, the opportunity cost of being at the academy still remains high. 20 hours a week for 10 months has implications for cost of living expenses, transportation, childcare, without mentioning the earnings that students are not making to support themselves or their families while attending the academy. But more importantly, it is our story at MSU. We know that talking about innovation is easy. We do that a lot. But innovating is a whole different story, and it takes work. 
So I'm thrilled to be part of the story of an institution that is anchored in the legacy of its land-grant mission, but willing to reinvent itself and innovate as our world changes. So on behalf of the students and the staff of the Apple Developer Academy with MSU in Detroit, I want to extend an invitation to all of you to visit us at any time, and I thank you again for having me here today. I'm happy to take a few questions and to continue the conversation via email with anyone interested. Thank you. What a powerful presentation. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Provost Yaitsko, for your leadership board. Comments, questions? I would just like to say, having visited you twice yes. now, um, <laughs> I have gotten to meet some of your students, and they're just the energy in in that place is just incredible. So I just commend all the work that you and your team are doing. It's thank truly you. a fabulous place, thank so you. thank you. Third time is a charm. Right, Please yeah. visit, yeah. visit yeah. us again. <laughs> Dr. Greta, can you talk a little bit about the application process? So how does someone apply and then the selection process? Yes, and great timing because we are about to launch our next round for applications for the third year cohort, which will start this summer. Uh, typically, we start with an interest form. We have some criteria that uh, we want to follow to ensure that we are prioritizing Detroiters first. So we have an eligibility process at first. And then students that come in go through, believe it or not, group interviews as the first uh, stage of the application process. So we reverse things a little bit because we're really interested in students who will do well in that type of environment. Students who are creative, collaborative, uh, we work around uh, what we call kindergartner skills, which are really professional skills. Can you be nice to others? Can you share? Uh, can you play well? All of those things. And then we focus on the skills themselves uh, to get into the academy. I have a question. Um, you identified Grand Rapids. I'm from West Michigan. Wondering how you are connecting with students in that area and then because it is such a distance for them how mm -hmm. are there scholarships for living expenses or the expenses of traveling back and forth for those students that are from west michigan or maybe even northern michigan i'm glad you mentioned this as part of the larger conversations where we know there are need there are needs in other places in the state right right now we're really focused on detroit and because of that uh, focus we limit um, application criteria, especially for Detroiters, but we often get the question, well, how about the other, you know, other places in the states where the need is also high, or what about those who can't drive from, uh, you know, uh, further out in the state to get to Detroit, or what about the ones that we don't get, that don't get accepted to the academy? So those are parts that we're working with Apple, especially as collaborators, on figuring out ways that we can redirect other to other programming that could be of interest and then connect the dots in the state so that there is a, both a sustainable but also cohesive strategy around how we approach it. Thank you. Yeah. So I just want to thank you, Dr. Gage. I've been trying to get, you know, I've been inviting you every time. Please come and talk to us because I think it's a really amazing um, program. One, that MSU is the first to do this in, in, on this continent is really important to me. Um, but then that they chose Detroit to partner with is really important. And so I want to just um, highlight what I think is the best part, the best parts of your, your program, that it's multi-generational. You said yes. parents up there, but I met a grandma while yes. I was there, right? Mm -hmm. Like there, there's a grandma who is doing this, yeah. yes. this coding work. So the multi-generational piece of that, the innovation um, to me is really important. But more than that, when you go into that space, you see that it's culturally responsive but you also see that it, there's a collectivism that you don't see in other spaces. And that kind of collaboration that, and, and the work that they're doing is just amazing, right? They, they speak a whole different language, mm -hmm. right? Um, they do. I, I didn't understand most Way of it. Right? <laughs> it was, Neither do I, but I just, It was yeah. sophisticated. Um, and, and, and like I said, multi-generationally, they were having this, this common conversation. I just um, want to, to commend you on having a co-constructed experience with them, mm -hmm. where learning is centered in ways that are um, that show up as beauty and I just appreciate you coming all this way to talk with us thank you yes. my pleasure good thank you thank you very much dr. Greg congratulations take back our um, excitement to oh, your yes. entire team our thanks to the team and our excitement to your students thank you again thank you